Hey, good morning, whatever about time. We are continuing on Masechet Brachot, and we are on Mem Gimel Amud Aleph 43a. The Limud of Amud Yomi for Chodesh Kislev has been dedicated by Shahab and Shana Zarabi for health, happiness, Parnasam, and prosperity of their entire family, and also by Aaron and Miriam Zaguri for the Luyin Shama of Edith, but Miriam that should have an Aliyat Neshama. Amen. Amen. Um, additionally, the Limud of Amud Yomi has been dedicated for this week for the memory of Farangis, but Yadola, the Neshama should have an Aliyah as well. Amen. Okay, so we are by two dots, five lines down from the top of the Amud, on Mem Gimel Amud Aleph, and the Gemara says, Hesevu, the Mishnah mentioned, Hesevu Echad Mevarech, that if you have, you start saying the, the Bracha of, thank you so much, of Repriya Gefen, before the Seuda, everyone says, for themselves, Hesevu echad mevarech lekulam. If you sit together, then one person says the bracha for everyone. So says the Gemara. Um, this is rather um, about the bread. If you're doing it by yourself, then everyone says the bracha for themselves. If you are, um, you know, leaning together, if you are um, reclining and sitting officially setting yourself up together as a suda, then one person says the bracha for everyone. So says the Gemara, Amar Rav, lo shanu el apat de ba yeseva, avol yayin, lo ba yeseva. Says the Gemara, Rav taught us that that's only for bread, because bread needs heseva. In order to be considered eating together, for a seuda, you have to be reclining and setting yourself up. That's considered official eating. But when it comes to drinking wine, you don't need to lean and recline. You sit together, you, walk, you stand together. All of that, as long as you're together, that's considered being set to drink together. And that's fine. You don't need to recline, says Rav. Rabbi Yochanan disagrees. He says, no. That even wine needs heseva. If you want one person to say bracha for everybody, even by wine, you would need heseva. So that's one way of saying this machloket. So in other words, we have a machloket between Rav and Rabbi Yochanan, history of which we have gone through several times of they were together in the yeshiva of Rabbi Yudah Nasi, they were peers in the same generation and so on. Rav and Rabbi Yochanan disagree about the difference between wine and bread when it comes to one person being a motzi, everyone else saying it for everyone else. So in the first, the two versions of this machloket, this was the first version. The first version is, Rav holds that only for bread you need it, for wine you don't need it. Rabbi Yochanan is more stringent. Rabbi Yochanan holds that you do need it even for wine. The second version of this machloket is the opposite, that Rav is much more stringent than Rabbi Yochanan, right? Says the Gemara, there are those who say, Rav said something else. Rav said, bread is, is the subject of our Mishnah because for bread, reclining helps. Reclining, if you recline together, it helps that now it's considered one chevra, one group, and one person can say the bracha for everyone else. But for wine, says Rav, even if you recline, it doesn't help. Wine, reclining doesn't help. Nothing helps for wine. Says the Gemara. Wine is considered, 
Even his seva does not work. Rabbi Yochanan says, Rabbi Yochanan Amar, Afilu Even wine, his seva works. So in other words, let's go back. This machlok is Rabbi, Rabbi Yochanan and Rav. Rabbi Yochanan is saying the same thing in both you know, in both of the, the ways of saying the Machloket, in both versions of the Machloket, Rabbi Yochanan is saying the same thing. Rabbi Yochanan says, whether it's pot or yayin, it's bread or wine, reclining works. Once you recline, you could say bracha, one person for everyone else. If you didn't recline, it doesn't work. That's what Rabbi Yochanan says. So Rabbi Yochanan is consistent. But Rav is the Machloket. In the first version, of the Machloket, Rav says only pot needs Heseva, wine doesn't even need Heseva. One person, even if you're sitting without reclining, one person can say bracha for everyone else and it's good. In the second version, Rav is very stringent. He says reclining even doesn't work for wine. So you can't even uh, be motzi, do it for one person, for everyone, even if you are reclining. So the Mara says, Metive, they asked a question from the Tosefta in Pergdalet Halachachet of the Tosefta. Ketzat said the Heseva. How do you do Heseva in the Suda? How do you do it? Says the Gemara, Orchim Nichnasin Veyoshvin Al Gabe Safsalim. The guests come in and sit on the benches that they have. This is before they enter. This is hors d'oeuvres, right? Shmurdik's world. Before they enter the actual hall, the actual party, they come in, they sit on the safsalin, the and the beds that they had. They're waiting for everyone to come in. So while they're waiting out there, they bring water for them, and each one of them does netila on one hand, washes one hand only. Why one hand? Says Rashi. One, one hand that they would be holding the cup of wine that they want to say the bracha on, right? Notel yado ahad, says Rashi, lekabel bakos sheshote lifne amazon. They want to drink a cup of wine before, before the, the, the dining, because they want to open their appetite, whatever it is, but the hand may be dirty today for their washing. The Tosafot explain the reason is because not kavod for the bracha to say bracha with some to hold something that you say bracha on with dirty hands. So whenever you want to say bracha, you're holding it in your hand. The hand has to be clean. It's not respectful for the bracha not to have a clean hand. So therefore, they would bring water. People would wash one hand, the hand that they would hold the cup of wine with. <clears throat> and it, that's why Tosafot says not kavod for the bracha because you're not making the wine dirty, you're holding the cup. So it's not touching the food necessarily that's the issue. It's the kavod for bracha. You want to say bracha, your hands should be clean. You're ho holding something, you're saying bracha, and it's disrespectful for the bracha to hold it with dirty hands. So they would wash one hand. They would bring wine, and guess what would happen? Every person would say their own private bracha of Rabbi Gefen on the wine. Then we're going through the chronology of things. Then when everyone gathered, now they're entering the actual hall of the, the party. Then they would go up to the actual hall. They would do Heseva. Now they're reclining, they're sitting to eat food. They would bring water for them. Even though that every one of them already has done on one hand, go back and wash on both hands because they're about to say Amotzi, right? So you do a regular for Amotzi. Then they would have wine. Even though that everyone said the bracha, says the Tosefta, beforehand in the other room, here, one person says the bracha for all of them. On the wine. 
Why not wash both of them? It's just <laughs> waste of water. I thought we'd like to use a lot of water. <laughs> we, we, we like to use a lot of water, not on the account of other people. You know, they say Chafetz Chaim. Chafetz Chaim was, was, uh, was hosted by some individual and all of them very nice. You know, have a lot to do with a lot of water and so on. So the host was, was this rich man and brings a lot of water. You know, knowing the Chafetz was excited. And he sees Chafetz Chaim, he's doing mamash with the relief. He's there, <laughs> the minimum, minimum thing he's doing. Uh, like, oh, what happened? The Sgula is a, it's a Sgula is when you're drawing the water from the well yourself in the winter and in, in, in deep in the December when everything is freezing. When you have this girl that's, that's here and her family is waiting at home for her and she's been working the whole day. And now she's going to go in this freezing weather and has to draw more water for me. I don't want my humrah to be on other people's account. My humrah has to be on my own account. You can't be mahmir, you know, more than ikara din on other people's account. That's the Chafetz Chaim. Anyhow, so they, they would bring water and, and now the one person says bracha for everybody. So Resha of the Tosefta says that everyone would say bracha of wine for themselves. The Seif of the Tosefta says that one person would say bracha for everyone. So says the Gemara, <laughs> however you slice this, we're going to have a problem here. You remember we had um, Rava Rabbi Yochanan's Machloket and it's two different versions of Rava and Rabbi Yochanan. So says the Gemara, Leheach Nishna Damba Rav Lo Shanu El Apat Seva the first way we had the Machloke mentioned, the first version of the Machloke that we had, that Rav says only Pat needs Heseva. Only Pat needs reclining in order for one person to say Bracha for everyone. But wine doesn't need Heseva, says the Gemara, Kasha Resha. Then the Resha of the Tosefta is very difficult. Why is it difficult? Because the Resha says, that they are coming in the beginning and every person has to say bracha for themselves. One person does not do it. Until they go in and they do heseva, then one person does it. So that clearly indicates that for one you, you need heseva. <coughs> Rav just told me for one, you don't need heseva. Right? So says the Gemara, Shani orchin de da'ataihu lemekar The guests are different because guests don't have, they're not, they're not the host. They don't know where they're going. They're there temporarily. <laughs> so in order for them to feel that they're setting themselves up for the thing, they have to be more set. So they have to recline. By the regular, regular scenario, you don't really need a seva for wine. But there are certain cases, let's say for a guest, for guests that is not their house, they need Heseva. So says the Gemara, for the other language of Rav, the second version of the Machloket Rav of Yohanan, the Amar Rav lo shanu ela pat mehanya le Heseva, avar yain lo mehanya le Heseva. In the second version, Rav said, only bread Heseva works, but for wine, even if you recline, one person cannot say bracha of wine for everyone else and be motzi them. Everyone has to say it for themselves. So is it sex? The, the sefa is a problem. Sefa says when they would go in the actual hall, they would recline and one person would say bracha for everyone. How's that possible? I thought I'm going to rob. You never have a scenario in which one person says for everyone. So says the Gemara. Kasha Sefa, Shani Hotam is different over there, says the Gemara. The Migu de Kamehanya le Seva le Pat, Mehanya le Seva le Yain. Says over there in the Sefa is different because here you are not washing for bread. You're actually eating a Suda. When you eat Suda and you're reclining, that is a super cute. And therefore, because your Heseva that you're doing, the reclining, works for making you one bunch, one group for the Suda, 
Mimela automatically, it tag along also works for the wine. Even though that normally, if you're not eating seuda, <laughs> you're just getting together for a little drink. That's not enough of a kviut that even if you recline, you're still not considered a bunch. But if you set yourself up for seuda, then it, it's a real group it's eating together. You're not just drinking. Drinking is not such a kviut. Eating together bread, that's cute. So once you're sitting together, reclining together, you're a bunch, you're a group that's eating together, that cute works also for wine. That's the only case that <laughs> works for wine. But if you're only drinking wine, even if you do a seva, according to that second lashon of, of Rav, it would not, the reclining would not work. Amen. Okay, says the Gemara, two dots in the middle of the Almud. Balahem Yayin Betoch Amazon. What did we say in the Mishnah when wine comes in the middle of the Suda? What did we say? That every person says, Bracha for themselves. So, in the spirit of one person saying it for other people in the middle of the Suda, that even the second Lishna of Rav agrees with that. Mara says, wait a second, why are why are you doing this? Why isn't why isn't it good enough that one person should say the bracha for everyone? Fair enough of a question, right? Why should it be that in the middle of the Suda, in the midst of the Suda, one person should not say the bracha for everyone, and everyone has to say the bracha of wine themselves? So this question, they asked it to the Benzuma, right? You remember we spoke about the, the, the bio, biography and the um, history of Benzuma. This is Rabbi Shimon Benzuma. He was a, a fascinating genius, one of the greatest Chachabim of his time. And the reason they, they didn't give him the title of Rabbi was because he was so young still when he passed away. He, he was so young that they were calling him on the name of his father, still a little Bakurchi, but he was one of the greatest sages of, of all time, even at that young age, Benzuma, right? But this is Rabbi Shimon Benzuma. He's the one who went crazy. He, he's the one that went, went after Benzuma and ben, ben Azai, one of them became crazy, one of them died. So says, says the Gemara, Shalu et Benzuma. They asked Benzuma, Mi penema amru bala em yayim amazon. Why is it that you have to say your own private bracha on wine when you are in the middle of the Suda? Why? Says the Gemara, after the, the meal, one person could say bracha for everyone. So what's the difference exactly over here? Amalahem, as what told them, Ho'il, the reason is, because people are eating, everyone is holding in a different um, stage of the food going down their pipe. So one person is saying the bracha and the other person is busy trying to chew and swallow. The focus is not really on the, the, uh, the bracha that's being said. Rashi says, their heart, their attention is not on the mevarech, on the person that's saying the bracha, but is rather on eating. So therefore, we'll wait, everyone would, would, would swallow their, their, uh, their food that they're eating, and then when they're ready to say the bracha, they will say it for themselves. Because it's very difficult to find one moment of time that everyone could pay attention because in the middle of Suda, everyone is doing their own thing. And therefore, for being Yotze, you need Kavana of the Mevarech, and you need the Kavana of the person that's be, being Yotze. When I'm saying the Bracha for you, I have to have you in mind. You have to have in mind that you're Yotze, that my Bracha counts for you. You have to pay attention and understand what's being said. So if your mind is halfway on a flight, and you're not really paying attention, so then you're not Yotze with my bracha. And hence, they said everyone should say their own bracha, says the Benzu. Says the Gemara, two dots. Ve'omer ara mugmar, 
So we learned in the Mishnah that the person that says the bracha on wine after the mazon, he is the one that says also the bracha on the besamim. Again, this is something that we don't have this practice so much nowadays, but back in the day, there was a whole uh, process to Seuda. They would sit and drink wine and pargyot to open their, their appetite. It was a whole production Seuda, right? They also didn't eat like five Seudas a day like we do. They, they had two Seudot, and this is on Shabbat, of course. They had a whole thing. They would sit and drink beforehand to open, to open their, 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 their appetite. Then they would have the actual meal. Then they would set, set themselves up to drinking afterwards. To, um, and then they had this whole production of besamim. And besamim wasn't like nowadays that you have like some powder and some metal thing that, that uh, goes around or, or uh, some hadas. They had a whole production. They, they had special um, wood incense and they would bring it and they would put, put heat and fire underneath until it would start. The aroma would go around the whole room. It was like a whole thing. And that was supposed to be like, you know, calming them down. And it was part of cleaning off the suda, basically. And that's the mugmar. Mugmar was not just besamim, was incense that they would actually put on fire and the, the smell would, would uh, the aroma would fill up the room. So who would say the bracha on that? The same person that said the bracha on wine after suda. From the fact that the Gemara, the Mishnah has to tell me that same guy is going to say the bracha on the mugmar, you see clearly that there would be reason for someone else to say the bracha. Namely, you have a greater person in the room. Right? Imagine at the end of the suda, someone very chashuv comes in. Right? Imagine Roi comes in. And now you have to give, give him the, uh, the, the bracha. I say, no. Even though that is more chashub, we give him to the person that's less chashub, but said the bracha on wine. Why is that, says the Gemara? Where am I? Why wouldn't you just give it to the greatest person in the room? Why wouldn't you? Says the Gemara. Ho'il vehu natal yadav tchilam. Ba'acharona. The reason is because, this is a Gemara that we're going to have um, later on, and also the Gemara is going to discuss this as well. That in the halachot of my macharonim, when you have less than five people that are sitting and eating together, the first person that washes their hand, that is the person that says the Brikata Mazon. If you have more than five, then you don't count the rest of them, but the five last ones, right? Uh, 20, 30 people. Then to say the first one is going to say benching, oh, until they go, the water goes around, it takes forever. So the last five people is what we count. So the first person from the last five, so if, if you have less than five people, who's the first person, period, right? If you have more than five, the first person of the last five that washes my maharonim, he's the one that says benching, right? This isn't an alakha, is it? Well, so the Gemara says, that person, why, why is that person saying the benching? Because it's like a concept of If somebody starts a mitzvah, we tell him to okay, finish it up. <clears throat> so since he started the process mm. of cleaning off the suda, which again, as we mentioned, the whole production after suda was, he sat with a glass of wine, and then you brought the mugmar, the spasami was a whole... So who started that process of cleaning off the suda? The person that said the bracha on wine after suda. So since he started the mitzvah, the process, we tell him, you finish it also, so therefore you will be the one saying the bracha on the mugmar as well. Messiah, the Rav. This helps Rav. The Amar Rav, Yabar Ashi Amar Rav. We learned in the name of Rav, a person that was the first one to wash my maharonim in the last group of five. He is the one that's going to say, Birkat Amazon, and lead the benching, right? So says the Marab, 
רב רבי חייא, הוויית ויקמא, דה רבי, דה רבי בסעודתא. רב ואיז אונקל רבי חייא, were sitting in front of Rebbe, Rabbi Yudah HaNasi in a Seudah. Now, so we, met, we have mentioned bits and pieces of this before. Rabbi Chia was the best, the, the highest level Talmud of Rabbi Yudah HaNasi. He was considered a Talmud Chaver. Talmud Chaver means not just a student, but a student <laughs> that is at, in some capacity like a peer to, to the Rebbe. So that's Rabbi Chia. Rabbi Chia was the uncle of Rav. Right? The uncle of Rav. And oftentimes he calls him Bar Pachti. Bar Pachti means Ben Chashuvim, Ben Gidolim, the son of Chashuv people, right? That's how he called his nephew. So now the uncle and the nephew are sitting in front of Rabbi Yudah Nasi. And what happens? Amaleh Rebbe le Rav. Rebbe at the end of Suda tells Rav, Kum Mashiach, get up and wash your hands. So Rav heard this, he thought, Rebbe is telling him his hands are dirty. Maybe he's eating too much with his hands, right? So he kind of like was taking it back. Chazia de Hava Maratet, he started trembling. He felt Rebbe is maybe giving him some musar. He's saying you're eating too much with your hands. Your hands are dirty. Amare, Rebbe Chiyabar, Rebbe Chiyab tells his nephew, Rav, says, Bar Pachti. Right? That's his, the, uh, the, the way he, he referred to him. The son of Gedolim, the son of Hashem people. He is not telling you, wash your hands because your hands are dirty. He's telling you, he's being mechabed you with Birkat Amazon because the first one that washes hands is the one that leads the benching. So he is giving you the kavod of you being the person that benches. So he's telling you, you will be the first one to wash my maharonim. And therefore, you will be leading the benching. That's what he's telling you. Two dots. Says the Mara. Amar, Rabbi Zera, Amar Rava, Bar Yirmiya, Mematay Mivarachin Al Hareyach. Now, this whole Mugmar business that we mentioned, that they will bring the incense and they will have the Besamim and so on. From when that, can you say the Bacha and the Mugmar? So, Mugmar is a whole process. You bring it, you have to light fire underneath it, right? When can you say the Bacha? Says the Gemara, Amar Rava Bar Yirmiya, me matay me varachin al hareach, me shetale timrato. From the moment that the smoke starts coming out, that's the time that you could say the bracha on it. Amar le Rabbi Zera le Rava, Rabbi Zera says to Rava Bar Yirmiya, he says to Rava Bar Yirmiya, veha lo ka'arach, he says, well, the moment that the smoke starts coming out, you haven't still smelled it yet. So why would you say bracha before you smell it? Says the Gemaram. Amale ultamech hamotzi lechem in aretz lemevarech vehalo achal. When you say bracha on, on bread, have you eaten it yet? No, you haven't had hana'a yet. You say the bracha prior to having hana'a. Not afterwards. So therefore here also, as, as soon as the smoke comes out, you know that immediately afterwards the smell is going to come to you and therefore you already could say the bracha. This is considered immediate enough to say the bracha, right? All the mitzvot, we say the bracha on them beforehand, right beforehand, right? And Birkat Hanahenin also is like that. It's not just Birkat HaMitzvah. It's Birkat Hanahenin also. You want to say it immediately right beforehand. You don't want to do things between because that would be have sick, right? So it's actually interesting. The, the Minhag the Sfaradim is the father says the bracha of Lach Nisobi Brito Shel Avraham Avinu by a Brit Milah prior to the Brit. Right? Not like the Ashkenazim who say it after the Mohel says the bracha of Alamila. Without getting into too many details of the Ramban and the Rosh and doing Mila and Priya, why it is like that, the Maase, that's the Minhag. Now you, you see some people, I was at the, at the Brit, that they, they brought the baby in and by the entrance of the hall, the father made out in the Lach Nisobi, the Brit Mila didn't happen until half an hour, 25 minutes afterwards. 
they forgot this, they forgot that, mm-hmm. there isn't this and that schmoozing and taking pictures and videos. And, and that's not correct. That's already over the over the over. And Bikat Mila is a machloket if it's considered Bikat Mitzvah. Is it that the Mitzvah is on the father to do the Bit Mila? When you say Lach Nisot Bitusha Ravavilu, you're saying a bracha on that Mitzvah that Hashem gave you to give a Bit Mila to your son? Or is it Birkat Hashevach that, ah, Hashem, you gave us the Britosh of Abraham Avid? It's Machloket, right? But if you say it's, you know, Birkat Hashevach by itself is Machloket, it has to be over last year. Tan also should be done prior, right before. But certainly if it's Birkat Mitzvah, it should be right before, right? So the, the, way we, the, the way I do it at the Brit, I have the Father <laughs> say the Bracha when I'm ready to cut. When I'm ready, Mamash, to do it. I have the father said the bracha, he makes me a shaliach, of course, right beforehand, and then you do the bris milah right afterwards. So here, you know that this mugmar is going to smell good. If you have a besamim, sometimes they bring you these roses, right? The, the Persians love to do this. They bring you roses, and it looks gorgeous. It looks beautiful. But then, there's no reah. You said the bracha, and then, <laughs> I think I have COVID, you know. That's uh, it's not, you don't have COVID, it doesn't smell. Sometimes you have to test in the beginning, make sure he actually has a reach tov, then you say the bracha. But if you know the mugman over here is not the new thing they're trying, they know it, it smells good. So, therefore, as soon as it starts smoking, you know already that you're going to immediately uh, be benefiting from the smell. You could say already the bracha. Says the Gemara. I'm going to hear about it. So in, they said it in the name of Rav. And there are those who say, Amar Rav Chista, Amar Ze'iri. Rav Chista said it in the name of Ze'iri. All of the Mugmarot, you say, right? Why? Because they were woods. They, they, were, they were pieces of um, you know, dried wood that they would put it, you know, powder, make it powder, whatever it is, and put it on this thing of fire, and the smell will go up, right? So all of the mukbarot you say borasib isamim, chutz mi musk or moshk in the, they, would, they, would, they would say it in Arabic and Farsi it would be moshk with a shin, right? And the way in English you would say it is musk, right? Which would be a bisamim that's taken from. Hmm? A specific type of deer. So it's not coming from any etz. It's not coming from any Aseb Samim. And that, the Mara says, she, she min hayahu, that it comes from a haya, from a kosher wild animal, a deer. She alav, bore besamim. And that you say, no bore isme besamim, lo hanoten reach tov baperot, lo, no bore no, asem. You say, bore mine besamim, Hashem, you have created different types and species that smell good, and this is one. So says the Gemara, they ask the question on this, You only make on the Afar Simon of Bet Rebi and Afar Simon of Bet Kesar. Now, Rebi was con- compared in his wealth with the Roman Empire, Emperor, right? The Gemara in Abu Dazara, then the few that Yalef, Gemara discusses the story of the close relationship that Rebbe had with Antoninos, the, the Emperor, the Caesar of Rome, and how, you know, loads and loads, truckloads, literally truckloads of gold would be delivered um, hiddenly from the household of Caesar to the household of Rebbe, and Rebbe would say, I don't need this. I have all of this myself. So no, you need more always for next generations. Not every case high is going to be as nice as I am. So your children and my children, they need to bribe each other. So that's something something else that you have to be careful. And so on. they had a beautiful relationship of a student and Rebbe. Rebbe was the Rebbe of Antoninus. He would come hiddenly to learn Torah every day from, from Rebbe. A tremendous relationship, right? So the, their wealth was compared together. The Gemara says, this is why the time that Mishnah was written, right? This is the, the Chachmea Mishnah and Chachmea Gemara were back to back. Rebbe's students became 
the, the Amoraim, right? Now, Rabbi Akiva already, who is an earlier Tana, is the student of Rabbi Eliezer, Agadol, <laughs> and Rabbi Yoshua, the, the famous ones, right? Rabban Gamliel, is their Rosh Hashiva and the Nasi at the time. So Rabbi Akiva lived right after the Hurban, right after the destruction of the Beit HaMikdash, right? So Rabbi was after this. It's already when Yerushalayim is under the gover government of Rome. And the Kesar of Rome really had power over the exile of the Jewish people in Eretz Israel, even in the Tanaim lived in Eretz Israel, Eretz Israel was under the domain of the Roman Empire, right? Bait Shini, right? This is after Bait Shini, of course. So says the says the <coughs> says the one. <coughs> this is the the first wide line now. <coughs> Val Hadas, and you say also on Hadasim, you say. So wait a second. The Mara says, you say the the Bora Sebisamim on three things on the Afar Simon of Bet Rebi and Kesar and on Hadassim. Three examples. So by the way, this is once we mentioned this, uh, Rebi was one of the three rich, richest people. The, everyone that was um, in the line of creating the Torah for generations was extremely rich. There are three, three of them. Moshe Rabbeinu was extremely rich. Rebbe and Rav Ashi. All three of them were, were extremely wealthy people, right? Because Torah and Gedulah, when you have to have that time of eternalizing Torah, it has to come with greatness in every aspect of life. The Maral has a beautiful piece of this, which is not for today. So says the Gemara, Tiyufta, that is a good question, says the Gemara. That's a good question, and Bezrat Hashem, uh, we will continue this in the days to come. Zavaro, uh, announcement.